If you're jetting off on the iconic island cruise with Morella Cruises this year, then this is the video for you. We'll be sharing a little about the ship, a lot about the port, and much, much more. If you want answers to such questions as, how far is it to the town? Do I need to book a transfer? Or should I take an excursion? Then you've come to the right place. If you don't know us, I'm Rachel, he's Wills, and we are Postcard and a Pint. So sit back, buckle up, and let's get ready for some iconic islands. As it's a fly cruise, you'll start at your local airport. Now let's get away from the grey and find us some sun. Hello Corfu. Hello gorgeous turquoise water and hello Corfu Airport. Now you may have heard a few horror stories about Corfu Airport. Let's just say it wouldn't look out of place in the 1990s. Our experience was great on arrivals, not so great on departures. But the TUI staff make it really straightforward. And before you know it, you're on your way to the ship. Your transfer time is about 15 minutes. And with TUI, all transfers are included. And there she is, the Morella Explorer. We found check-in really quick and efficient. Even though we'd printed out all of our embarkation documents, don't stress if you haven't. Happy Rach! All checked in, arrived at the port. There's our ship, it's 30 degrees. Happy days! We then walked about eight minutes around to the ship. Transport was available, but it was quicker to walk. From checking in to boarding the ship took no more than 15 minutes and when we found our cabin, our cruise keys were on the door waiting for us. Happy days! We're now in our cabin, we have to watch a video. Oh, boat drill has changed since my days. None of this seven languages out on deck. We've got to watch this and then later on we've got to go check in at our muster station. A muster station is where you meet, should the sirens go off um, to abandon ship, to get into your lifeboat, but we won't be needing that. So watch your safety video and note the time you need to check in at your muster station. Now for one of the main reasons, people cruise. We're off to the marketplace on deck 11 to get some food because we're starving. Yes, food. From the second you're on board, you're all inclusive. Here's a quick overview of what's on offer. The marketplace is your ship's buffet. It's open for most of the day and does breakfast, lunch and dinner buffet style. There are often different themed cuisines. The main dining room is called Latitude 53 and is stunning. The dress code on Morella is quite relaxed, but don't show up to dinner in your swimmers, eh? We found the menus good and the food tasty. Cheers! Other restaurants on your all-inclusive package are the Mediterranean Tapas, Mediterranean Italian, Vistas Italian, that was delicious, and Snack Shack. You're sure to find something you'll love. There are some chargeable restaurants on board and if you want these, do book either before you cruise or in the first couple of days as these do book up. Right, that's food. Let's quickly check in at our muster station, eat even more and enjoy Sail Away. Now you know what we said about Corfu Airport. Well, they've just announced that the Sail Away that was due to be about 11 o'clock is now going to be 1 o'clock in the morning. Gonna because happen. we got up at 2 o'clock, I don't think that's going to happen Yeah, there's us. late flights coming in. That is not going to happen. So we're going to have a nice quiet last drink on the back of the ship, away from the pool, away from all the um, shenanigans. shenanigans. Have one last drink and then we'll see you back in our cabin ready for good night and we will see you tomorrow. Day one complete. Your first day on the iconic island's cruise is a sea day. There are loads of things you can do on board. We did the ship tour. That will bring up all the tours. It was really interesting and we learnt a lot as well as getting a good feel for the ship and its layout. You could of course relax by the pool or enjoy an all-inclusive drink. But not wanting to burn, we attended an audience with the captain. He was a funny guy. After a quick pasta on back deck, that went quick, we enjoyed the views off Morella Explorer. Braved the pool for a little bit, but it was too hot. Then we found a little haven of peace and quiet to read our books. One of the things I like about this particular ship is, even though it's quite big, it's not one of the massive ships, it's not one of the smaller ships, there's about 2,000 passengers, just under, about 800 crew, but despite that, even though the, the pool areas are pretty busy, there's always somewhere where there's no one about and you can have it to yourself. Ah, it's fab. It certainly is. Then it was time for dinner in Latitude 53. The Morella staff really are second to none. Take it away. Hello, I'm here in Morella. <laughs> My name is Hendrix, but don't call me Jimmy, okay? <laughs> we won't. Then we took in a quick show before bed. Great work. We 
then got an early night as we wanted to be bright-eyed and bushy-tailed for day three. As... We're, we're in Santorini. Santorini! We certainly are. And... We're going on a tour. Come with us. We'd booked all of our tours before we sailed. As Santorini is a tender port, we had to go to the theatre and wait for our tour to be called. Tendering is when the ship holds anchor at sea and passengers are transported ashore by smaller vessels. Do note, if you haven't booked a tour, you will need to wait until the morning tours have departed until you are free to make your way ashore via tender. We'd booked the Ear and Island tour and couldn't wait to get going. The ship tenders opposite the town of Thera. If you go ashore yourself, you'll be dropped off at the old port of Thera where you can walk or cable car up to town. If you're on a tour, chances are you'll go to Athenos port to meet your boss. It's a steep ride up, but then you're on your way to Ia, the most famous town in Santorini. And 20 minutes later, you're there. It's about an eight minute walk from where the bus drops you off into town, but then you're free to wander for an hour and fill your boots with stunning views and blue domed churches. It is absolutely stunning. We were lucky as our bus was one of the first to arrive, so we did get uninterrupted views. It did quickly become busy, however. After your fill of blue domed churches, we recommend a drink. We've stopped for a drink stop because it's very hot, but what a gorgeous view. You can't get a better view than that for a Coca-Cola stop. It's a cracking view. We then had a quick look around the shops and got ourselves some souvenirs. And our thoughts on ear? We're heading back to the bus. Absolutely loved ear. We wanted to come here for ages and we will be coming back for sure. We loved it and really wished we'd had more time to spend in Ia exploring those divine narrow streets. But it was time to get back on the bus. And for the next stop on the tour, where are you? This is the highest part of Santorini. It was an incredible view, but we'd have sacrificed this part of the tour for more time in Ia in a heartbeat. Back on the bus. We were then dropped back in Thera, where after a little history from our guide, our tour was over and we were free to explore the town, and then make our way back down to the old port of Thera to catch a tender back to the ship. Thera may not be as quintessentially pretty as Ia, but there's plenty to see. We love this church. Santorini sits atop a submerged volcano, and the views across the caldera from here are stunning. Loving Santorini. We had plenty of time for a good mooch around. We stopped for lunch and enjoyed a feast of Italian and Greek food. Delicious! We continued to wander and explore. Everything was so vibrant and colourful. But before long, it was time for another beer. What do we say, Wills? Yamas! Cheers to you two. Then it was time to catch the cable car back down to the port. The price of the cable car was included within our tour and it's a swift two minute ride down to the bottom. Do be aware that there are often massive queues for the cable cars if there are a lot of ships in. You can walk, but please don't take the poor donkeys. Hopefully if people stop using them, they can have a better life than hauling tourists up and down a cliff face. The Morella crew were handing out water at the bottom as we waited for a tender, which was a nice touch. This tour cost us around £42 each, and we did feel it was worth it. We personally would have preferred more time in Ia and would have not bothered with the highest point of the island. Our port time in Santorini had been from 7.15am till 5.30pm, and that was plenty of time to take a tour and explore Thera. Back on the ship, there's plenty to do. We took a nice refreshing dip, grabbed a quick drink and then headed up for Sail Away as... We're just leaving Santorini. 
sail away is always one of our favourite parts of a cruise. Couple that with a sunset and you're on to a winner. After a delicious dinner in the marketplace, it was Chinese this night, we graced the show lounge once again. We do love how you're greeted at the door with a drink to take to your seat. Very civilised. We liked some shows more than others, but one thing we did note was how hard the Morella show teams work. We saw five different production shows in seven days and two fly-on acts. Lying in my bed, I hear the clock for you. Top work, guys. Time for our last drink out on deck before bed. What a great day three. Would you look at that? Day four and we're up at sunrise again. World ten past seven. But this is the day we've most been looking forward to. It's Mykonos Day. Tell us why. Morning. Morning. We're in Mykonos. Ooh. Oh, a happy place for us. We absolutely been here love a few it here. times, haven't we? Yeah. There's now a new dock for the cruise ship, yeah. so we've chosen to walk in. It's going to take us about forty minutes. So they say. So they say. We'll but tell you if that's it is true. Early in the morning, but right at the exit to the port, there's a sea ferry. Which cheekily on board, they didn't tell the passengers that, and they're charging them five quid for a bus. Five euros. Five euros. Sorry for a bus. No, five quid. Five pounds is it? Five oh, yeah. pounds for a well, bus. Two euros for yeah. water taxi. 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 Literally straight outside. Where the, so where the ship docks. We are going to get the water taxi back, so come Maybe. with us as we walk into Mykonos. Yay! So if you dock, it's a 40 minute walk, a two euro water taxi, or a five pound coach from the ship. There is also a chance that you could tender here. We'd say don't walk, as there's no pavement for most of the way, and you're at the mercy of the Greek drivers. But we're still alive to tell the tale. We're nearly there, we've been walking about 20 minutes, which is about right. We've been stopping to do a bit of filming, and yeah, nearly there. As we were shaded by the hill, it was a very pleasant walk, and we soon happened upon the Mykonos we knew. Past Mykonos Town Beach, which as well as being stunning, things here really have moved with the times. Check out this nifty piece of kit. Isn't that amazing? Accessibility onto this beach, you can get your wheelchair down, get into a sea chair and be taken out into the sea safely. Perfect! We were having the best day already and we were almost at the port. The port in Mykonos is so picturesque and is somewhere to sit, grab a drink and people watch the world go by. You won't be short of churches in Mykonos town, they're everywhere and most are open for a visit. It is this one though that everyone comes to see, Paraportiani, which is actually five small churches built on top of or next to each other, the oldest dating back to the 14th century. It's stunning. You'll find this church just behind the harbour. Another famous and incredibly picturesque part of Mykonos town is Little Venice, with its bars and restaurants spilling out onto the sea and its vibrant colours. What's not to like? One of our favourite films of all time was filmed here. Take it away, Rach. One of the reasons we fell in Mykonos was the film Shirley Valentine. I think deep down we're both Shirley Valentines. We both like to run away from life and um, swim in an ocean as deep as forever. And we watch the film every now and again. We get nostalgic for Mykonos. And this is where she had Greek salad with her friend Jane in the film Little Venice. With a view of the famous windmills, which incidentally we're going to visit next. The windmills are a very easy walk from Little Venice and are another iconic landmark of Mykonos town. These windmills were built by the Venetians and were once used to mill grain. They still stand proudly looking over the town. Mykonos town is a maze of narrow winding streets. It was designed to confuse pirates and it's easy to see why, as you can get lost at every turn. Surprisingly, Apple Maps and Google Maps work really well and we used them a lot this day. We of course had to honour our inner Shirley. I think actually this is the spot where Shirley Valentine had a Greek salad. It's not pretty cool, is it? Cheers, Shirley. One day we'll run away just like you did. We went to the town beach and had a swim in an ocean as deep as forever. Then walked back to the harbour to catch the sea bus back. We'd loved our day in Mykonos town. Everything is walking distance and the streets are just magical. Back to the ship. We're just going to touch briefly on the all-inclusive drinks package. Cheers! Every Morella cruise is all-inclusive as standard, which is amazing. You can choose to upgrade to the premium package, which is £10 per person per day. 
This gives you named spirits, better wines, soft drink cans, posh coffee and a wider range of cocktails. The info about your package is stored on your cruise card, so if you choose a drink from the premium package, that will just get charged to your onboard account. Or you can upgrade to the premium package at any point during your cruise. There are loads of different bars where you can grab a drink on board Morella Explorer. We tried them all. Our favourite, both night and day, was the Mediterranean bar on deck 11 aft. It's day five and we're up with the sun once again. Our port times today are from 8am till 5.30. The beauty of Rhodes is that the dock is literally right by the old town walls and gates. It's a three minute walk. There are 11 gates into the ancient city. We've just entered through the Gate of the Virgin and we're now going to check out the Church of the Virgin. Come with us. Rhodes is just awash with history. It's all around you. One of our main reasons for getting up so early was to try and get to the Street of the Knights before the crowds and bingo. This is the Street of the Knights. It's one of the best preserved medieval streets in Europe. And there was nobody on it. This street has seven inns representing the seven countries where the Knights of the Order of St John came from. It really is an incredible street and at the top of it is the Palace of the Grand Masters. We paid 10 euros to go inside and we'd say it's well worth it. Upstairs there are some amazing mosaics dating back to 200 to 400 BC. We highly recommend going early to beat the crowds. Another thing we did was to climb the Raloi clock tower for the views at the top. How's it going, Rach? More steps, more climbing. We're in the Raloi tower. Apologies, I've just said that wrong. We get a free drink with our ticket. It was five euros to come up. Brilliant views, very steep stairs. But the views are certainly worth it and you have the whole of Rhodes Old Town at your feet. Now let's have that free drink. For the rest of our time in Rhodes, we browsed the plentiful shops and bought some souvenirs. We do love the artwork on offer here. It's very reasonable. This was probably the hottest day of the cruise. So what better thing to do than dip your hands in some water, find a restaurant and get a beer. Cheers! Rhodes was actually supposed to be our second port of call, but the captain switched them to give us a quieter Mykonos. Cheers, captain! We walked along the front as far as St Paul's Gate. From here, we looked across Mandraki Harbour to where the mighty statue, the Colossus of Rhodes, is said to have once stood. But it was now so hot, the law of an air-conditioned cabin was calling, so we set off back to the ship. There are other entertainments on board. At 5pm every evening, there's a quiz. Who's got the pipe? Doing a quiz. We were rubbish. So as well as the theatre shows, you can watch live bands and solo musicians. Catch a movie under the stars. Maybe even have a little flutter in the casino. Enjoy some music or a game show in the Squid and Anchor. Or attend a deck party. Once you're the wrong side of 40, you're either a day person or a night person. Not usually both. It's safe to say that we are both day people, so didn't attend a lot of the evening events. Give us a nice meal, a show, a sunset and we're happy. See you tomorrow. Day six and another cruise hack, fill up your water bottle. Head to the gangway, because today we're in Suda for Harnia in Crete. Morning. Morning, we're in Harnia. Well, we're not actually. We're in Suda. We're in Suda, which is the port for Harnia. In Crete. In Crete, and we're gonna go and try and find a bus. So Suda is the port and is pretty industrial, but right outside the port gates are buses to take you into Harnia. One booth takes cash and the other takes card, so you're covered. Tickets bought, onto the bus you go. We've arrived in Market Square in Carnia, and that was about, what, 15, 20 minute bus ride yeah. from the terminal? And um, We've never been here before. Never, but we're the one place on this whole yeah. cruise we've never been. So we, we don't know the place, we've, we've got, got a map. map and um, we just got to wonder. See what happens. You're dropped off by the market hall. We always recommend dropping a pin on maps on your smartphone, so you know you can navigate back. Then it was a pleasant 10 minute walk down to the harbour. We did stop in this church on the way though. The Church of St Nicholas, beautiful. Then on we walked. Right, what have we got here, Wills? We think these are the old Venetian dockyard buildings. You're almost right, Rach. 
actually builds that the old Venetian ship sheds, which were used to service the Venetian fleet. They were built between 1526 and 1599, and there used to be 17 buildings like this. This is the only one that remains. Now we'd spied a wall that ran all the way around the harbour, and we thought we want to walk that. So after a quick drink, cheers, we did. The views were beautiful and we walked all the way to the end to a lovely lighthouse. Well, that was a bit of a trek and the, you can't get in the lighthouse at all, but it's pretty impressive. It's the oldest one in Europe. Ooh, it's hot. It's Greece. We'd read about the Venetian harbour and how pretty it is. So next on the agenda, that's where we went. What a pretty place. We're now at the Venetian Square and if you told me this was an Italian fishing port, I believe you, the architecture really is Italian. And behind me, the Hassan Mosque. OK, so that wasn't very Italian, but all in all, we totally fell in love with this charming fishing port. We stopped at this cute restaurant for some bread and some tzatziki and a beer, then continued walking to the far end of this harbour. It was very pretty. Our port time today was 8am till 3.30pm. Even with the shorter day, we felt we'd had enough time. We even had time for ice cream! Then, thanks to the handily dropped pin, it was back to the bus and back to the ship. Top day! If you do have an early sail away, there's plenty to do in the day. Like running. Mm, we didn't. A game of footy. We didn't do that either. Shuffleboard. Nah. This is where you can get rid of your kids if they're doing your heading. You can also deposit them here in the game zone, but they won't be supervised. Or you could try and persuade them to read a book. Never gonna happen. There is also a gym on board. We went to this, had a quick look and then left. We're on his holidays. There's also a spa, but we thought it was expensive, so gave that a miss too. Day six complete. It's day seven and... Today, today we're in Katakalon. We are, and we're off on another tour to ancient Olympia. It's around a 45-minute drive from the port to the site. This tour was a little more expensive at around £55, but included both the ancient site and the museum. Our tour guide was very knowledgeable and we learnt a lot, but once again we would have liked more time to explore the site ourselves. As the birthplace of the Olympic Games and the place where the Olympic flame starts its journey each Games, it's such a historical place. The highlight has to be the walk into and the old stadium. Have you learnt anything then, Rach? Right, what have I learnt so far? I've learnt if it's brick, it's Roman. If it's stone or marble, it's Greek. They used to run three running races in here, two short ones and a long one, but they never ran in circles. They had to run up and down. Um, the stones over there where the judges sat, it held 45,000 people. There's no seats because you could cutch everybody up and fit more in that way. The arch is Roman because the Romans like to make an entrance. See, I was paying attention. Now tell us all about the lighting of the flame. We're now inside the Temple of Hera. She's the goddess wife of Zeus, and this is where the Olympic flame starts its journey. Inside here, they have old ancient Greek dancing and a high priestess with a torch. Outside, on the altar of Hera, a metal bowl with some dried stuff in, a little hint of propane in there as well. The high priestess takes her torch, puts it into the metal bowl. This is the Olympic flame. It is then carried by the high priestess out to the stadium to the first volunteer to run the first leg, and then it runs and runs and runs, and until it reaches the Olympic Games. And the first one was in 19, I'm gonna say 36, for the Berlin Olympic Games. Get me, I'm on a roll. Next. This is the Temple of Zeus and it's absolutely incredible. All the stones you see lying on the floor are the original part of, unfortunately there was two earthquakes, I think in the sixth century, I'll have to check that and it basically flattened Olympia. In 2004, the archeologists who were working on this site erected this column to show sort of what it would have looked like. This is 10 meters, but they say the original columns were 20 meters high. Can you imagine how magnificent, awesome, crazy this temple would have been? I think I loved Olympia as the facts went in and stayed in. Next, we visited the on-site museum. This houses many of the finds from the digs at Olympia. Hello. There are some incredible things here. 
our favourites were the friezes from the temples. All too soon, it was time to go. Share your thoughts, please. That was really good. Just wish we had a bit longer. Yeah, same, same as in the tour. Just wish we got a little bit longer. Another half hour right around the ruins. Really good. Back at the ship, and our port time here is 9 a.m. till 5:30 p.m. They call this port Catacalon for Olympia. The reason being, Catacalon is literally two streets. The front street is all bars and restaurants looking out to sea. We had tzatziki with a cracking view of the ship and a beer, of course. Then we wandered along the front. Posed with Mr. Siegel. Why they need a noddy train for a place with two streets. Then we went back to the ship via the back street, which is full of shops selling souvenirs. If you want art, or in fact any Greek souvenirs, get them in Rhodes. It's a lot cheaper. What do we say, guys? And that's Katakawa. All two streets of it. Back to the ship we go. On our last night, we watched the show, showed our appreciation for the amazing staff and crew of the Explorer, then popped our cases outside our door ready to be collected. We'd see them tomorrow, Quayside. Good morning from Corfu. We're all, I say checked out, we're not really checked out. We've got we've left the cabin. We've left the cabin. Had breakfast. Had breakfast. We've checked our hand luggage in so we don't have to carry it around all day because it was a bit heavy having to put What you can do is you can leave it yeah, in the go bar. Up until four o'clock, which is perfect for us. So we'll leave at quarter past six. So yeah, once the ship is cleared, we're going to go and find a way to get into Corfu town. We didn't book the pre... Booky, coachy thing. Book so coaches things because we're a bit rubbish. rubbish but yeah. I'm sure whether we'll it's a tourist, there's a taxi or a yeah, bus or something we'll like that. we'll find a way. Going to have a look around Corfu Old Town, last mosey around some Greekage yeah. shops, and then we'll come back to the ship, lunchtime, take a advantage of the we're, food. Because we're still all inclusive, <laughs> all inclusive until the second we leave the boat, um, as in leave the time. boat for good. Yeah, so that's, so that's good. really, really good. So we've got food and drink covered yep. all day. So um, we'll see you in Corfu Town. The beauty of having an evening flight means you get to spend the day in Corfu. Did you find a way in, guys? Well, it was pretty straightforward. You could have got a taxi. There was loads of them. You could have got a bus. There's a bus. Yeah, but you know, we've eaten too many sausages. We decided to walk. Good call. Currently here, I think we're going to stick to the road by the coast, end up in the old port square, and then we've got the old town on our doorstep. Nice. It was a beautiful walk, and we enjoyed every second. It took us about 30 minutes to make it to the old town. As it was early, nothing was open. But what a pretty town. We visited the old fortress. This is a Venetian fortress. This fortress successfully defended all three major Ottoman sieges. This is both a bell tower and a clock tower, and rarely tells the right time. We really enjoyed our visit here, but the highlight of our day was the area of Falaraki that sits below. Wills? Cheers! This little area in Corfu is absolutely stunning, highly recommend it. It's called Falaraki Beach, nothing like its Rhodes counterpart. There's just a handful of little bars. They've got steps down into the water, a really shaded harbour, swimming underneath the old fort. It's absolutely gorgeous and we wish we had our swimmers, but we might dunk our feet in a minute. Yes, we'd have loved to have jumped in, but could only dunk our feet. If you're in Corfu for the whole day before your flight, Pop your swimming stuff and a towel in your bag and visit this place. By now, Corfu Town was open and we had a good look around and bought a few last souvenirs. Then we caught the bus back to the ship. I gave the bus back, it was one euro seventy each. Yeah, 3.40 so, for the both of us. Back to the boat. Yeah, great morning exploring Corfu Town. Back to the boat. We grabbed a bite to eat, failed at the quiz once more, got our hand luggage, left the ship. Aww. Then after a quick repack quayside, we headed home. 
We'll gloss over the fact that Corfu Airport was a total nightmare. We stood outside for two hours and were really late because we'd had the best time ever. Do we recommend the Morella Explorer? Absolutely. Do we recommend the iconic island's cruise? Yes, we do. All of the islands are so different, yet each one has its own personality and charm. If you'd like to see more of our trip, we have four diary-style vlogs of our week's adventure. Thanks for watching. We've been Postcard and a Pint. Adiosas.